the parents who are who have uh, with parents uh, of children who have gone through this program. And uh, first of all, before we delve deep into this discourse, uh, allow me to introduce the director, Father Kinoti Gabriel. Good morning. Good morning to Madam Elizabeth. I'm yes. happy to be here. Yeah, good thank to see you again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you thank Kindly you. introduce the, 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 the team that uh, you brought on board today. Okay, welcome our viewers. We are here again. Today we have come with the, with, with the team. I have with the coordinator of the program of the Right of Continuous Institution to Handle to uh, Mr. Grigori. Brother Grigori is here. You can see right? mm -hmm. And one of our parents who is here. And mm -hmm. I want to ask them kindly, you say your name, and then possibly you say his name, so that the trip can from, from there. Yes, it would also be nice to mention where you come from, so that perhaps the viewer might send a shout out to you. You never know, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. My name is uh, Brother Oblet Gregory Musembi Maeke, OSB. I've been the coordinator of this program since the year 2018. This being our sixth year in this part of the passage program. Mm -hmm. mm, I come not very far from here, from Blessed mm. Sacrament mm. uh, Parish, Bulgaria Parish. 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 Mm -hmm. I recently relocated back home to Mbone. Okay. Mbone Parish, now is where I reside. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank Glad you. Glad to host you. And you have a parent right here. Kindly uh, tell our viewer who you are. Yes, Madam Elisa. Mm -hmm. My name is Ali Vincent Oleri. I come from St. Benedict Palace, Ruaraka. Mm -hmm. But my home county is in Kisi Diocese. But recently I decided on at Saint, within St. Benedict Palace. That's where I stay. Mm -hmm. I've been on this program since 2018, and I was been elected to be representative of the parents in this program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So that means that your child has already graduated. Yes. Great. Yeah. So and my name is Sasha Elizabeth. Feel free to weigh in the conversation. And our number is 0717424866. It's just crawling on your television. You can drop also your questions, comments about uh, uh, our conversation on our social media platforms. And uh, we will sample some of them as and when the time allows. And first of all, because we are going to make this brief, because there, there are graduates also awaiting to share the experiences with us. So uh, first of all, let me first start before I get to the parent. Uh, just a brief overview for the sake of that one person perhaps who doesn't understand what this program is all about. Briefly. Okay, our viewers, as we welcome the, the from four, sorry, for class eight, those who are finished and all our kids as well, those who are in high school and also primary school. We are talking of a continuous initiation program, and it is a, a, it is a, a program which is actually a introduction to handlethood. That's why it's called continuous initiation to handlethood. Mm -hmm. We are from the school of thought that introducing one to uh, engine system, which is handlethood. Uh, we need a series of time. Where we should stay with our with our kids and also grow with them mm -hmm. and with their parents, assessing them to go, to to grow. First of all, psychologically, we are in the realm of mental health and trying to see some the present psychological methods of trying to sustain behavior and also spiritual health. To try to measure and try to assist our, our viewers, so, sorry, our candidates to grow in a spiritual atmosphere and also in the social world. We are in the world of the social media and so many things. We really need to to live with this uh, with this um with these challenges mm -hmm. but more so we want to see whether we can have a cultural based a value system which will assist all of us to live and to be able to face the challenges of our time. This is what we say, the light of continuous initiation to handle. And that's why we are in the 60 here. And now we have the new initiate coming soon of which you will share the data. This is actually the brief overview of the program. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much, Father Kinoti. And I'll go to Brother Gregory. Uh, as the program coordinator, what are your responsibilities? My responsibilities are quite varied. Huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I begin with the process which I'm doing now of 
taking care of the parents that are coming in, yeah? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. making known the program, just like they're doing here, mm -hmm. uh, posters, advertising, going out to parishes, and mm -hmm. registering mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the candidates who are coming in, mm, making sure the payments have been done, getting facilitators for the various units that we have, taking care of the venue, where they're staying, mm -hmm. for the circumcision of the boys, making sure the surgeons come on time, that the boys are well kept, making sure that uh, the boys are comfortable, that specific units are taught, and that the, the graduates are able to grasp mm -hmm. what has been taught, mm, they're able to understand what has been taught, evaluating how they're getting on, making sure we also get, get into them, maybe get the mental status, how they are physically, mm -hmm. mentally, spiritually, mm, move with all those factors. Mm -hmm. At the very end also, liaise with the parents, which I'm doing even now, just now giving calls from parents. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. How is the program doing? Where is the program starting? Even thereafter, coordinating the all information formation programs, mm -hmm. mm, both for the graduates and for the parents. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And making sure the, the ongoing process, ongoing formation process that she succeeds eh, and reach, reaches its end. Eh? Mm -hmm. So it's a quite an end-to-end -end kind of coordination, both for the parents and also for the graduates, eh? mm -hmm. really making sure that we're hitting home. Great. With our message. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, speaking of uh, the ongoing formation, uh, there has been uh, uh, different kinds and most of them traditional forms of uh, initiation. And uh, we've seen so many people, uh, including places of uh, worship, that uh, uh, they announce the, the formation of, of children, girls and boys. How different or unique is this particular program, RCIA? How is it cut out from the rest of the programs that we have in the society today? Thank you very much for that question because mm -hmm. that's what differentiates us from the very pro many, many programs we see. Mm -hmm. And as Father mentions all the time, uh, Entering into adulthood is not an event. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-day affair, graduation, become mm -hmm. your circumcised, and, and you go home and forget about everything. Mm -hmm. It cannot be that. Eh? Just as we grow, as people grow, people mature. And it's, it's that maturity that we want to also accompany, eh? mm -hmm. that we accompany that young man mm, throughout, especially the, the beginning years of, of uh, adolescence, eh? of teenage years, eh? that we grow with them. So mm -hmm. what does that entail? Eh? That entails that every holiday we call them. Every April holiday, August holidays, some holidays we call them. Either for spiritual inputs, mm -hmm. psychological inputs and assessment, or academics and career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do that for the, for the, for the graduates. Of the whole through secondary school, eh? mm -hmm. now some of our graduates will meet one of them. Is in, is, is in university now, eh? since mm -hmm. 2018. Eh? So but we do you that. still do follow-up. We still do follow-up. Mm -hmm. so that continues for me. We do also ongoing formation for the parents. Even after graduation, we move with the parents. We are also with their online, because a lot of them are busy. We have online programs for them, like I, recently we just did with Father Spiritual Intelligence. Eh? Mm -hmm. and our spiritual grounded are there. Mm -hmm. eh? <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We also have a handbook which accompanies the child in the school. Eh? So we don't, we, don't, we don't just leave the child there, hanging dry after the graduation, mm -hmm. but even after, after the graduation... Just hold it. Is that the handbook? That's yeah. the handbook. Oh, okay, yes. you can just hold it. Yeah. We give each and every child a handbook, eh, mm -hmm. which they can refer to mm, in school. Eh? Mm -hmm. There's a, it's a companion outside the physical. Eh? Mm -hmm. And it has prayers. It has how to deal with parents, how to deal with peer pressure, how to, deal, how to recognize symptoms of... Uh, the occult, for example, of gazing, for example, how to deal with mm, aggressive friends, how to study, patterns mm -hmm. to study, and all kinds of things. So, so the ongoing formation component also continues beyond the graduation. Mm -hmm. eh? so, so upon graduation, sorry to cut you short, mm -hmm. uh, do you get uh, to meet these graduates at some point, maybe when they are on a long recess mm -hmm. from college? Exactly, and that's what I mean when we, we call them every, every, every holiday. Oh, okay. Every holiday we have a program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like now, after this program, we'll have another one for the ongoing formation program. Mm -hmm. So we call them every holiday. Eh? Mm -hmm. We are with them every, every holiday. We have a unit or session with them every holiday. Mm -hmm. What's most important also is to accompany them also in the, in the mental status, eh? psychological status, mm -hmm. eh? and spiritual status. Eh? So we note from the very beginning any kind of deviancies the child might have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they come in maybe August, they're behaving like this. When they come in December, through a questionnaire or through one-on-one -on -one discussions, we detect 
because um, Father and I are psychotherapists, we detect mm -hmm. if there are any deviances mm -hmm. and address them immediately. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even uh, address the parents eh, about mm -hmm. any deviances we might see. Eh? So mm -hmm. this ongoing information program helps us to monitor, <laughs> monitor the Every growth stable. of the child in mm -hmm. all dimensions. Eh? Every step of the way. Every step of the way. Every three months, four months, we are with them. And that mm -hmm. is proving very, very, very effective. Uh, great. Thank, Thank you very much for that detailed mm -hmm. explanation uh, on how unique uh, this program is or how different it is from the rest. So I'll allow me to get uh, to the parent now because uh, uh, it is uh, a collaboration between a parent and uh, the program uh, 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 managers or director and coordinators to ensure that uh, uh, these kids get um, holistic continuous formation. Uh, Mr. Oreri, how did you come to learn about our CIA program? Yeah. This program, I came to know it when Father was introducing it in our, in our parish. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's the time whereby I had it and I joined it mm -hmm. in 2018. That was back in 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. When it, was, when it was introduced in our parties, mm -hmm. that is the time I knew it. So, so that's when you enrolled your child? Yes. Was it just one child or you? No, I enrolled one child at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And how has this program so far since 2018, up until now that uh, your child has already graduated but you still work with RCIA, uh, how has it benefited your child and your family? Yeah, when I look at it, mm -hmm. since the child joined the program, it enlightened him. From that time, even the spiritual, even the spiritual God, he was he, even the spiritual he was He was formed he spiritually. Was, he was mm -hmm. informed spiritually. Mm -hmm. Even that time, even immediately after the program, mm -hmm. when I look at it, immediately after the program, after the first camp. Mm -hmm. That is the first time I realized even he joined, he, he joined even the other boys. Another thing, I see him changes, he is much more responsible than he was. Mm -hmm. And when you look at him, mm -hmm. you see some other changes. He's someone who can see things, mm -hmm. like someone who can see things ahead of you, like he has more information than what he does in know from the previous time. Mm -hmm. So, in the spiritual, he, he gained from the spiritual, became responsible, and at least he, he got the skills mm -hmm. on how to move on with life. And usually he gets right and stand every time he goes for the, for the program. Mm -hmm. So when I look at him, it is a good improvement to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a parent, it gives me much easier time because when you look at it, it does give you hard time to collect him all to go to continue informing him every time and now. At least, what I shall do, it is just that minding. But when you look at him, he's on the good track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Reilly, for that. So uh, this boy is also supportive towards the family. When you compare before he joined the program and right now, what kind of support or how is he different in a family context or setup? Yeah, when we look him at in the family, in the family mm -hmm. even, the, even the behavior, even let's say even in players mm -hmm. and the way other, other brothers and the sisters and how they behave, you might see him like he is he, he's, he's doing something like collect him all. Mm -hmm. These things are supposed to be done this way, not this way. It is also again like he's collecting all his teaching them. Mm -hmm how to move to war with other things which I don't know. Right. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for that. And uh, I'll get back to further. Uh, when you start this program, you had a clearly cut or said role of community and family in supporting these children that are going through this continuous initiation process. Could you please share with us and uh, let us know how does, how does the community contribute towards this and family members, how do you liaise together with them? Yeah, for for heuristic formation, mm -hmm. in fact, the the, the the peers of any kind of formation is the parent or the family, the family, mm -hmm. because remember the other time we are talking of preformation where somebody is conceived the womb and then he comes and then information. This one is about done by mentors and the family, and mm -hmm. this information is done in schools and colleges, and mm -hmm. then transformation is the spiritual aspect. But what I'm trying, according to to us. The basic role of the family is to form the children. But now as these children then go for any social or educational institution, they need also to be assisted by people who are not actually their parents so that they can be able to hear everything out mm -hmm. and they can also see that we have parents in court house and there who grow with them. Mm -hmm. So we emphasize the role of the family, of the community to support the program mm -hmm. and also educate them that the basic roles of every community is to bring half children well, children well and also to continue educating them. But mm -hmm. what is also important here is the parents, we have seminars or we have talks, we have meeting with them and we share what they see from their children and from there we are even more inspired because what we believe in is that going in the world of the children of the of the teenagers mm -hmm. so that we can grow with them because much of the older the days that we had people who come to mentor who come to to give motivational talks and and and, and, and things to children mm -hmm. but we really try to ask what do they think of certain situations in their life. Mm -hmm. So we enter in their world, mm -hmm. we enter in the parents' world and we start now growing together so that if any challenges come, is there. For example, now when they are coming out of the world, one of the questions will be, just share with us one of your best, what made you very happy in school when you are there. Mm -hmm. And from there, you will try to see whether there was something positive which has growing up in the child, which you can now emphasize. Mm -hmm. And then we ask you, tell, tell us one, one of your hardest thing or your most challenging thing this year. Mm -hmm. And then he's talking about an episode, maybe in school. Or maybe if this one does not work, we as psychologists, you know how to, to, to bring it down. Mm -hmm. You can give a question, just mm -hmm. answer this question and say, ah, you have seen something here. You talked to a friend at school. What, what do you think of that friend? What happened? And from there we are able to investigate and also assist that child to grow in a challenge which he cannot change and also which is which he can change you know he has all the potentialities mm -hmm. to bring the change and the backstops at the child mm -hmm. not now the parents who is that time away yeah thank you thank you for that father gabriel now uh at this point we understand that we are living at a time uh Oh, we have we have so many uh, communities, and I'm meant to believe uh, in in our past discussion with Father Gabriel, he said that uh, the program is not uh, it's all inclusive, so uh, the, it's not limited to a specific uh, community. But at this point, we we need to address the aspect of inclusivity and cultural sensitivity in this initiation process for participants from ba diverse backgrounds, and uh, in terms of. Uh, the, 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 the stages and what every stage entails towards this formation, uh, Brother Gregory, uh, could you please shed some more light on this, uh, uh, all the inclusivity and uh, the sensitivity to cultural, diverse cultural backgrounds? Thank you very much. I think uh, it's good to understand where we are coming from as Africans. Eh? Absolutely. I think it's very, very good to understand that. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. And the temptation to Europeanize everything uh, and to what is African to throw back uh, and forget about it. Eh? So what we have done in our um, initiation processes mm -hmm. and, and camp is to um, make it, first of all, very inclusive. Eh? We do it for boys and also do it for girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are not denominational, eh? though we are running as a Catholic church, but everybody then is allowed to come. Eh? Mm -hmm. We don't... We don't discriminate 
from Muslims mm -hmm. to whatever Christian denomination you want. Whatever. Hindus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I think what's important now for us, as Father mentions, is the the formation component that goes with it. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's not only the act of circumcision, but the formation component that goes with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, as you can remember, you remember, you know, African tradition was paramount, eh? and especially as, as young men were entering puberty, there was a process mm -hmm. by which they were separated, mm, which sure. we do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from one stage, separate them, like we do for the camp, keep them there, then teach them, and then bring them out again as different people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing in this camp. Eh? It's not a one-day affair, it's not a two-day affair. It's an affair. We stay for them for be between 10 and 14 days. Eh? And we are serious about what we teach them, not indoctrinate, but what we impart to them as life skills to mm -hmm. live in the new world. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. And which is what was also very important in African tradition. And they will take them for even a month or two. Eh? Mm -hmm. But of course, maybe we don't have the time, the luxury of time here, yeah, because it's just working, it's been a very short time. Mm -hmm. We bring them, we stay with them, and, and teach them and give them life skills. Eh? And that is very African. In nature, the very African nature. No, not only that, but also we make them make promises. We have them make promises. When the graduates come here, they can tell you what promises they made. Eh? Mm -hmm. And these promises are also symbolic. Mm -hmm. When they said what well, there's the spear they hold, uh, mm -hmm. there's a Bible they hold, there's a basket they hold. Eh? So these are also very symbolic. Very symbolic about us is also they walk through a forest. You do walks through, through forests. Forest. Where we hold this, uh, the, the, the camp is in Tigoni, you know, mm -hmm. the big abbey, in Prince of Peace Abbey in Tigoni. And this is the most serene place you can ever take anybody for an initiation. What is the go essence of doing that? <laughs> yes, it's bringing that, that Africanness, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. bring up that going to the forest. Eh? Like, you know, remember in the forest mm -hmm. where the gods stay, where the people used to go and pray, to the, to the and, shrines. And, to the shrines and mm -hmm. That's a symbolism, eh? That is very powerful for the child. Eh? We go, they walk through the forest. Mm -hmm. It's a real forest, not only a joke. Eh? Mm -hmm. Walk through the forest, eh? and then they cross a river. They come to a river, eh? and then they make their promises. On one end of the river, with their sponsors, mm -hmm. who, who accompanies the child, mm -hmm. and then after their promises, before Father and God and the congregants and the parents, they cross the river into a new beginning. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is very powerful. That's mm. quite interesting. Quite interesting, mm -hmm. quite African, but African meshed with Christian values. Eh? Meshed with Christian values, because they mm -hmm. make promises holding the Bible and a spear for the boys, mm -hmm. the Bible and a basket for the girls. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we are doing that. Eh? So these symbolisms remain very stuck in the mind of the child, and the child looks back on their graduation days and they, can, they cannot resist but remember what they have been taught. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Thank therefore, you remain on the line uh, more often than not. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, uh, let me get back to um, to Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, as a parent, how has the RCAA program benefited you and would you recommend this program to any other parents or guardians? Why so? Yeah, I recommend the program to continue mm -hmm. and I had other parents and guardians to join the program because when you look at the society we have now, things are changing here and then. Mm, right. So, it is so good when parents bring the, the, the children in the program, the child could be mental and they will learn more. They will learn more things whereby the parents cannot have time to to teach them. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at the parents, most of the parents, they are so busy, they are nowhere to be seen. Especially in the modern world where the modern parents way we are, are busy yeah. <laughs> working. Mm -hmm. So, this child is supposed to men be mentored all the time through, mm -hmm. where they can get a place whereby they can learn more mental. Because as they move, as they go around, they are getting more challenges all the time through in school, even where we stay. Mm -hmm. So it is good to bring more so that to get more skills and mental for the future of them.
Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much for that. My director says it's time to usher in the graduates because uh, much has been said about the program, what it's all about, what you do on your end. Although as uh, we do that briefly, I'll give you, uh, uh, every one of you, two seconds. And uh, let me start with uh, Mr. Oreri. Just two seconds. Just say a word to someone who's watching. Yes. My fellow, what I'm about on Yangalia, what I may request you is to join this program. It is so good. Mm -hmm. It will remember your child and you could see the change once you join. Mm -hmm. So be positive on it. It is a good idea and the program will help more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Mr. Oreri Vincent. Brother, two seconds. Your two seconds. Two seconds are very short. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> you don't go. No, okay, it's very okay. important. Just remind parents of the program of this this year. Um, mm -hmm. We have the we're calling it Upendo class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are registering right now. It's mm -hmm. going registration is going on beginning on 14th to 25th. Eh? Mm -hmm. So kindly, I think we let later on give the details. Kindly register your child for this program and you will see the difference. Eh? Mm -hmm. You will see something that will happen in that child. What life. are the prerequisites? Prerequisites, of course, are the, a, a form mm -hmm. that they have to fill, a registration form, which can be sent to you online. You can mm -hmm. even fill it online. You can make your payments online. You don't have to come. But we'll meet the parents on 12th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, twelfth or two o'clock this month. This month mm -hmm. at the parish, and the boys will join on fourteenth. Eh? And the prerequisites: once the parents then make contact with us or contact with me, I'll send them all get. that they need to know okay. what the child needs to carry, what uh, the, the demeanor, mm -hmm. the pictures of the place. We can discuss about what is going on with the circumcision, which mm -hmm. doctors are coming, all this okay. kind. <laughs> All and the of details. Course, fill, okay. fill them in and everything. Great. That they so need you to can know. get in touch. Yeah, and get, we'll get, we'll get great. This. So Thank finally, you for uh, Father Gabriel, let me give you 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. What I would like to tell, especially the parents, you know, a child belongs to the community. You know, from the time we, we the, the somebody is seen is pregnant, that child belongs to the community because you ask, when the, the child you are carrying you from the stomach to the hands, and then you give it to the community. That's why you need the parents to be with us mm -hmm. so that we can assist to one another to make, to form and to grow together because the greatest work for parents is to mentor the next generation. That's Absolutely. The call. I concur with that. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming and for sharing with us uh, about uh, the RCIA program, uh, Father Gabriel Kinoti and the team. And uh, right now I wish uh, to uh, just take a brief break and then uh, welcome the graduates because I can see there's some uh, traditional uh, articles here and of course religious. We have uh, the Holy Bible, some salt and candles. I think the graduates will help us to yeah, understand <laughs> yes. All right, so we take a break and we appreciate uh, uh, the director, Father Kinoti, the program coordinator, Brother Gabriel Musembi, and uh, uh, the parent, uh, Vincent Oreri, for their time. So we take a brief break, but stay tuned. We'll be back with the graduates to get their experience from the host's mouth. Pidan al Señor para que me bendiga. La oración de ustedes me da fuerzas y me ayuda para que pueda discernir y acompañar a la Iglesia escuchando al Espíritu Santo. Por el hecho de ser Papa, uno no pierde su humanidad. Al contrario, mi humanidad cada día crece más con el santo pueblo fiel de Dios. Porque ser Papa también es un proceso. Uno va tomando conciencia de lo que significa ser pastor. Y en este proceso aprende a ser más caritativo, más misericordioso y sobre todo más paciente, como es nuestro Padre Dios, que es tan paciente. 
puedo imaginar que todos los papas al empezar su pontificado tuvieron esa sensación de susto, vértigo, del que sabe que va a ser juzgado con dureza. Porque el Señor a los obispos nos va a pedir cuenta seriamente. Por favor, les pido que juzguen con benevolencia y que recen para que el Papa, sea quien sea, hoy me toca a mí, reciba la ayuda del Espíritu Santo, sea dócil a esa ayuda. Oremos por el Papa para que en el ejercicio de su misión siga acompañando en la fe a la Grey que le ha sido encomendada por Jesús y siempre con la ayuda del Espíritu Santo. Hacemos en silencio esta preguiera de voy su dime. Y recen por mí, a favor. Tumsifu Yesu Kristu. Watawa wa Franciscan Sisters of the Heart of Jesus, pamoja na familia ya Bwana na B. Julius Mahehu, inawaalika kwenye sherehe ya jubilei pamoja na misa ya shukrani ya Sister Lydia Wairimu Mahehu. Sherehe hii itafanyika Ijumaa tarehe 3 Novemba kutoka parokia ya Sacred Heart Wetima, Kiroga Local Church, huko Udhaya, kwenye Jimbo Kuu Katoliki la Nyeri. Kwa maelezo zaidi kuhusu sherehe hii Piga simu kwa nambari 0723-268-4. Welcome back and thank you very much for keeping tabs with us here on uh, Capuchin Television. This is Right of Continuous Initiation into Adulthood with me, Sasha Elizabeth. And as promised, this is the second uh, session of the program. And as you can see, have uh, new faces. These are the graduates. You really look uh, wholesomely formed. And I can see uh, there's a spear here. We only had a, a, a chondo. And these uh, yes, are the ones, yes. there's something else, so we get to understand that. But briefly, just introduce yourself and let us know in your introduction, uh, when did you graduate from our CIA program? I will start with you. Um, my name is Michael Mikokilote. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated in the year 2021, mm -hmm. uh, the resilience class, and uh, yes. So, so that was the resilience class. You told me there are different names, yeah, different and yeah. Openda yeah. and all that. And, and you kindly introduce yourself to the viewer. Well, thank you very much for giving me the chance to introduce myself. My name is Matthew Ngugi. I'm from St. Joseph Parish in Kawaskari, and I live just in Kawendani. And I graduated in 2018. Uh, our name was Fidelity Class, the Fidelity Group, mm -hmm. which, which the Father Kinote has talked about. And that was the time I graduated on 2018, yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you for joining the conversation. And the lady, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah. Tell us, tell us your name and uh, uh, your parish and when you graduated from the RCIA program. Um, I'm Evelyn Maike. I am, I am a parishioner at Holy Trinity in Buruburu. And I graduated in... Fidelity 2018 class. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you are in the same group with Matthew. Yeah. Great. So thank you and welcome on board. I'm glad to have you. So very fast, uh, what what are your experiences during the initiation and uh, camp and especially the graduation ceremony? I'll start with Matthew. Please share with us briefly uh, your experience. How did you find uh, uh, the entire program up until you graduated? Okay, thank you very much once again. Um, the, the program was actually very nice. I was able to, I was able to learn a lot of skills um, in terms of building myself, uh, in terms of mentally, bodily, and also 
the, through the through the soul, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was able to interact with a lot of people there, the brother, the community there, the brotherhood, the father Kinoti, and also Gregory himself. They were able to direct us, and also other associates of them. They were able to direct us very well. Uh, I remember before coming to the Rika program, I used to be a I used to be a rude, rude, ignorant kid. I was very reckless with my with myself. Mm-hmm. But once I joined the program, I was able to understand. Yes, it's part of part of growing. I was able to now walk into the the rightful path, and I was able to now change my ways, and of which it has made a huge impact towards my life. And mm-hmm. I'm grateful for it. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful for it, and I'm grateful for everything that uh, I was able to share with the people and the memories that we had with the, with the other boys there in the in the camp mm-hmm. and yeah it was a great experience from a bad boy to a reformed boy <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right thank you for that Matthew. remind me your second name uh, michael Mbuko. Uh, so, Michael, what, what did you pick out from uh, the entire process? Uh, share with us briefly before and uh, after you went to the, the, the program, the RCIA program. How is it like? Um, when I came to the program, I was a silent kid who, who was not equivalent to other activities. Mm-hmm. So um, I was able to cope it cope up with that and to relate with other people. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you learned how to relate with people yes. in different contexts or different groups? Different context groups mm-hmm. and also to be open-minded. Mm-hmm. Did you get go through the forest? No. <laughs> Perhaps you should, you should get to, to that. And uh, Evelyn, yeah. I, I can see uh, you're happy, you're really happy since uh, you have uh, good experiences about uh, the program. Please share with us. Mine is mostly about the psychological part of it mm-hmm. because when you entered the program, I was a bit slow on my self-esteem. That mm-hmm. was back in when I was in primary, mm-hmm. and you you had a one-on-one session. You could have a one-on-one session with a psychologist, mm-hmm. and it really helped me to cope up with my esteem issues. And yeah, it helped me through high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am very happy about it. So you went through high school, and right now, do you still attend uh, uh, the, the the call the calls during recess when you you when you are on holiday? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I do. So so what do you uh, engage yourself in during that time? Okay. As for me, I'm a, I can say I mentor the help mentoring the others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to grow spiritually. Psychologically, yeah. mm-hmm. so those who are still uh, in the yeah. lower levels. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Evelyn. And at this point, I wish further uh, to as you wrap uh, what they have shared in their experiences. What are these uh, benefits generally that uh, graduates or uh, uh, students or initiates stand to uh, reap or obtain from this program? Okay, thank you. Uh, allow me to mention very briefly on the on, on the the cultural artifacts which mm-hmm. you have here, mm-hmm. and uh, this is actually the greatest benefit when when a child comes to this uh, program. Mm-hmm. Uh, we send we monitor uh, the psycho, spiritual, social, and the cultural perspective of this mm-hmm. of this. Of this. Mm-hmm. We believe uh, when we talk of a cultural tradition, we we as Africans. We have a culture which entails a value system, and that's why to, to, to emphasize on the cultural perspective or a value system which you profess, we have the African spear. You can see the, the, the gentleman, by mm. the way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you make use of that? I write, I, yeah, we, they always own it every time when they come for it, and own it and say, I, I still promise. They do the the the, the real promises. They are, they are promises they, they, they usually do, mm-hmm. and they repeat it always when they come. Mm-hmm. It is a show of courage and stamping your authority on what you say. Mm-hmm. Remember, most of the people would think. Remember the other time we say we don't use bows and arrows. Those are used for fighting. But spear is a sign of authority in African tradition. Mm-hmm. Remember, we are talking about sign of authority. We are not taking telling people to carry spears everywhere and some mm-hmm. cultures they don't <laughs> carry spears. So the okay. thing is not the spear. Mm-hmm. The thing is the hodori to which we are giving these grand ones and they must own the spear in this cultural, in the, in the, in the, initia- in the initiation program. Mm-hmm. Some are saying now we bring the kids now for, for, for a 
seminar, but they are not initiated. Mm -hmm. You know, in African tradition, you must undergo a ritual and a cultural with simple, same like this. Mm -hmm. And go through, for example, we put the forest there, we go through the river. Mm -hmm. That one makes you being initiated, and from there, you continue now in that. Mm -hmm. So, from the spear, mm -hmm. you run out to be courageous and you say, I will be just, I will stand well, I will not abuse drugs. Mm -hmm. They repeat that for four years when we are with them. And then, for, for them, you know, in Africans, as Africans, you know, ladies, they don't carry spears, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> not carry spears. <laughs> yeah, in Africa. Yeah, yeah. But we, we have another symbolism. That's why you have this basket. You see, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the lady is just holding a basket. Mm -hmm. A basket is used to, to, to carry, to contain, and to preserve. Mm -hmm. So they yep, say, I will carry and preserve the value system yep, which yep, I yep. profess. As an African girl, mm -hmm. I who uphold, I preserve the values. That's why the girls, when they hold this, we always remind them, do you remember you ordered the, uh, the basket and you say, you will carry the values in this. I will be just, I will stand well and not abuse that. I will be, I will be faithful. Mm -hmm. These are some of the values they profess. And always they remember. Remember from the time I hold the spear, I will never forget it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, was a Christian tradition, we have the, the Bible. And since we have the African Bible, mm -hmm. to show that it's African who now, we are, we are, we are bringing Africans who are spiritual. Mm -hmm. And this African Bible, they hold this with a spear. With a spear. Mm -hmm. the, the, the values, because they are, the values are here with a spear, and then they profess I will be just, and always they repeat that every, every, every time. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, also in the church, we give them in African tradition, it says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verses 12, you read, you are the light, you are the salt of the heart. We always read this reading when we do the Eucharistic sacrifice before we impress them. Mm -hmm. They light the candles and put them up, and then we pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit and say, remember, Lord, these young ones, they have been initiated, they have started the process of taking care of, of themselves, work with them, oh Lord. And then we take a, 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 a very nice photo to send their parents, mm -hmm. and always they remember, they will be the right of their families, the right of their schools. And when they come again, they say, do you remember you are still right or something has happened to you? And then when they say, <laughs> when they say something has put it away, then we say, we can still redo it. You mm -hmm. don't have to despair, life has to continue. And then from there, we, 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 we embrace the salt and then we ask them to, to taste something. And then we ask, tell the families, make sure this salt you use it in your family. And you say, for example, when Madi went home or Valen, they use that salt and that, all that, before they finish, they say, we are tasting the value of having this gentle lady in this Margaret, in this Dennis, in this Matthew, in this family. Mm -hmm. And then they have the right there in the family and they continue praying with that right until it expires. And always praying for the mother, for, 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 for the graduate that he will be mature and be the right of the family, the right of the school, the right of the country, and also the soul to give taste and also direction in their life. These are some of the cultural artifacts because this is a Christian cultural aspect mm -hmm. and African cultural aspect. We mm -hmm. should try to put them together and then the psychological, you know, we don't see the psychological, mm -hmm. so example, the special <laughs> mental health. <laughs> That's when you talk about it, uh -huh. you, you get it. Great. Yeah, so at what point do you introduce these uh, artifacts to the people, to the uh, students? Is it at during uh, uh, the initiation process uh, or upon graduation? It's, it's the initiation process. What you do right now when they come on 14th, mm -hmm. first of all, for the boys, they come hardy because they, those who are not operated on, mm -hmm. they will be operated. That's circumcision. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. uh, there are, there's another parent who was calling me. He said, now, uh, the, my child has been initiated. Uh, what should I do? Say, mm -hmm. who initiated? No, mm -hmm. I took him in the, in the hospital. I mm -hmm. said, my goodness, you know, this, this is a problem. <laughs> Without parents. <laughs> they think taking a child to a hospital to another campus it's not initiation, that's a mm -hmm. conversation, it's, mm -hmm. it's a medical operation. Mm -hmm. so, that, that's okay, but the child is not initiated. Kindly bring the child with other boys. Mm -hmm. We'll not be operated on because for, for us that is an accidental, allow me to use that name, circumcision. Mm -hmm. But the values which we tell and the process which is taught, the mm -hmm. teaching and the, and the meaning of this is what counts. Mm -hmm. And that's what we tell them. We initiate this and then they grow in this process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Father, for that. And uh, as you've had, circumcision is not initiation. And uh, briefly, as uh, we uh, 
plan to wrap up this because uh, time is against us. I wish to understand from you, let me start with uh, Michael. When you are ongoing formation programs, there are specific uh, uh, classes that or programs that you attended. Uh, do you remember some of the topics and uh, what did you pick out from them? Um, thank you. Um, the topic that I able to gather were um, that you should be able to cope up with stress. Mm -hmm. You should be um, also the topic we also to, to discuss were um, drug and substance abuse. Um, STIs uh, towards the human body, and yes. Thank you, thank you for that. So, up to date, the, do you uphold those values? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I do hold them. Okay, thank you very much, Evelyn. <laughs> share with us what did you pick? I know you say you you spoke about the psychological aspect or benefits of going through the RCIA formation, but specifically to the topics because I know for all those day, uh, it's close to a fortnight that you stay there. There are different activities that you participate in. Could you please share with us? Mostly, it was the sharing part that mm -hmm. really helped me. Mm -hmm. When you get to know you're not the only one facing those challenges, mm -hmm. there are also others. Yeah, so it really it helped us because we interacted with them and sharing with each other. I think it helps. Yeah. Uh, so you would do that in a in a group context or a, yeah. in, a, in interpersonal context. There was group context, and mm -hmm. also there was one on one with the psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, all right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, maybe we get to hear from Matthew. Uh, uh, share with us some of these uh, activities. And also, in Aaronic, we just suggest you to share with us the experience in your university life because now you're in university yes. and uh, how different you are from the time you began. Yeah? It's in the university, it's in Form 3, and mm -hmm. also it's in the university. Yeah. Okay. Sure thing, sure thing. So first of all, started out since primary, went to the Rika Foundation prog program, mm -hmm. then initiated, went through the through the the classes and all. And then then I went now into high school now for one, mm -hmm. Sasa. Mm -hmm. So now, of course, I was new to the environment, uh, the the school system. I wasn't I, I wasn't flexible to it. Uh, I mean, I had I faced a lot of challenges. And then when I came back during the, it was an April holiday, we came together and we went all the way to, to Bible in the Ground, which is in Nanyuki. So it's whereby when we came all together, since everyone had in, were in high school now, your time, your Kwanza, we came, each one of us, to share experiences. Now, the good thing about it was that you, 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 it came to a situation whereby I had a different experience from, Evelyn, Evelyn had a different experience for me, and the mm -hmm. others like it was, it was just like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I will share my experience to others. Others will share their experience. Now we'll each learn from everyone else. Mm -hmm. I will learn from I will learn I will learn from Evelyn. I will learn from my other people that they were, they were, we were with, mm -hmm. and they will also learn from me. Evelyn will learn, learn from me. We were exchanging whatever whatever lessons we've gained during mm -hmm. the high school experience. Mm -hmm. And it, it used, it, the programs were used to come over on um, during the holidays mostly, mm -hmm. during the holidays mostly. And also sometimes we'd go back to St. Benedict, maybe a week or two, exchange thoughts, deal with uh, psychology matters, and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, especially with Brother Greg, uh, whereby you just sit with him, talk about what you want in your life, and uh, what I, what and how you're going to maintain it? In my high school life, uh, of course, I, f I of course I missed. I had a few mishaps, nearly mistake Kiasi. Then I remember I went. I came back. Uh, I came back with another friend of mine. I was in a mentorship program with Father Kinoti and Brother Greg. And then I was reminded about the values, mm -hmm. uh, the authority, everything that I vowed. And then I went back to now continuing the path. High school, I finished up with high school, now I joined into uni. Now I'm grateful for the, the whole path that I've mm -hmm. And right now, the, the way I am right now, the way I articulate myself, the way I'm able to handle myself, uh, I think it's, it's all because- It's different. It's way too different, yeah, mm -hmm. it's way too different before back then. And I see changes in myself every single day. 
Absolutely. Uh, Thank briefly. you very much, Matthew, Thank for you. that. Uh, and uh, all these uh, 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 anecdotes and testimonials about your experiences at RCA are a testament that indeed uh, it, it is something that plays a significant role in your formation as a whole, the continuous formation. So we appreciate that. And uh, keep the fire blazing, all of you, wherever you are, and spread the word. Encourage others also to enroll, to seek to enroll for the program. I believe that's something you're doing, right? Yes. Great. So, Father, as we close the discussion, could you please share the contacts in case there's a parent or guardian who would wish to reach out and find more about the program with the aim of enrolling a child into it? Okay. My contacts are, Father Gabriel is 0781-032-247. 0781-032-247. And also our coordinator, Brother Gregory, 0714 Eight nine two four one three zero seven one four eight nine two four one three. The ongoing the the, the registration for the new uh, candidates open to class twenty twenty three is continuing. Kindly contact us at Saint Benedict. You register and then on twelve we plan ourselves on fourteen. We bring the new graduates and for the girls we start from eighteen. But all of them will graduate on twenty fifth, which is on Saturday. And we are all of you welcome to see this one live on 25th in Tigon Monastery, which is in Dimuru. You can, you are welcome there. And also we have the continuous uh, information camp, which starts from 28th of this month. Those who are not newly initiated, they are welcome on 28th this month, which goes out to 2nd of December for the continuous group. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Father, and uh, wish to close this discussion here. I appreciate the camera person, Alan Andiva, and uh, Wilfred Matundura uh, on sound, Frederick, Ochi Frederick Ochieng, and uh, Priscilla Wanjiru on visual mixing, as well as uh, the transmission desk uh, team led by Peter Mwangi. My name is Sasha Elizabeth, and I wish you a great afternoon because it's already noon. Thank you. Pidan al Señor para que me bendiga. La oración de ustedes me da fuerzas y me ayuda para que pueda discernir y acompañar a la Iglesia escuchando al Espíritu Santo. Por el hecho de ser Papa, uno no pierde su humanidad. Al contrario, mi humanidad cada día crece más con el santo pueblo fiel de Dios. Porque ser Papa también es un proceso. Uno va tomando conciencia de lo que significa ser pastor. Y en este proceso aprende a ser más caritativo, más misericordioso y sobre todo más paciente, como es nuestro Padre Dios, que es tan paciente. Puedo imaginar que todos los papas al empezar su pontificado tuvieron esa sensación de susto, vértigo, del que sabe que va a ser juzgado con dureza. Porque el Señor a los obispos nos va a pedir cuenta seriamente. Por favor, les pido que juzguen con benevolencia y que recen para que el papa, sea quien sea, hoy me toca a mí, reciba la ayuda del Espíritu Santo, sea dócil a esa ayuda. Oremos por el Papa para que en el ejercicio de su misión siga acompañando en la fe a la Grey que le ha sido encomendada por Jesús y siempre con la ayuda del Espíritu Santo. Hacemos en silencio esta preghiera de voy su dime. Y recen por mí, a favor. <risa>